G'day guys, I'm here with uh, Scott Allen, the famous voice of Scott Allen. Here he is in person. Hello. Hello. Uh, is that a baritone voice? I'm not sure, oh, actually. Okay. It's a Vin Diesel voice. <laughs> he emulates Vin Diesel. <laughs> All right. Uh, tell me something interesting about yourself. <clears throat> interesting. I uh, started playing golf last year. Is that interesting? No. Yeah. How about number one plural site author in the world? You, yeah. you can say that. Sure. All right. So we're not going to talk about Pluralsight here, we're going to talk about the history of Visual Studio. Oh wow. We're just going to do a bit of reminiscing. True. Okay? Yeah. So, 2002, mm. we got uh, web forms and mm. web services and Windows forms. Yes. Do you have good memories of then? <clears throat> I do. So, funny story. Mm. I was at my desktop computer in a cubicle farm one day when Microsoft announced the C-sharp language, mm -hmm. and I brought my coworker over and I said, look, another language. The world doesn't need another language. We have C++. <laughs> but I came around about six months later, so I was very excited about Visual Studio, uh, the first release. I remember trying to download it in a hotel room, and it was taking forever, but um, I was very excited to start using it. It was such a big leap over what we were using before. Had you used VB6? I had used VB6 a little bit and built a lot of stuff with classic ASP. Yep. I have to say I, I wrestled with web forms initially. I only at that point had a couple years of web development under my belt and I just couldn't make the transition immediately. So it took it took a little bit of time to get used to web forms. Mm. Web services though were great because we had actually at this company I'd worked with before the release of Visual Studio tried to build some SOAP web services with some of the early SOAP web uh, SOAP toolkits that Microsoft had released, and the Visual Studio experience was much, much better than that toolkit. I remember um, the first time seeing ASP.NET, uh, some people had tried to make ASP Classic, um, mm. you know, using uh, HTTP, XML response, and not uh, doing a yes, page refresh, right. and we were forced to go back, and we thought, oh, that's no good, but very quickly we forgot, and we went with the productivity. Yes, um, just being able to um, use the toolbox to drag, th drag things onto the, the designer, I thought that was initially very cool. Um, my opinion might have changed over the years, but it was certainly groundbreaking at that point to see that sort of experience from right. web development. So 2013, we got .NET 1.1, we got uh, mobile devices, mm -hmm. we got uh, Compact Framework, Enterprise Templates, yes. and we got ReSharper. ReSharper. That's the only thing we still care about. <laughs> So again, there's the story of when I saw ReSharper come out, I thought, no, I don't need this tool. I actually resisted it for years. <laughs> now it's like the first thing I install after Visual Studio, it's still ReSharper. All right. <laughs> 2005, we got .NET 2, yes. we got generics. We yes. got Click Once, we got ASP.NET 2, yes. we got out, we finally we got a local <coughs> web server so we didn't have to use IIS. Yes. We got uh, in the testing space some web tests. And we finally got TFS, so we didn't have to use Visual Source Safe. Visual Source Safe, which I was still using at some places up until uh, 2005. So that was a that was a big improvement. And certainly, generics were a huge improvement to the C# -sharp language. I can't imagine C# -sharp without generics now. Also, ASP.NET 2.0 was a very interesting release because at that point, ASP.NET had demonstrated that it was a successful technology, and it it just felt like the and all of Microsoft was building stuff for ASP.NET 2.0. That's what it felt like. It was such a huge release. Two th I think we also got Silverlight around that time. Was it... Uh, we don't talk about Silverlight, don't worry. Uh, yeah. What was, it? What was <laughs> Silverlight? <laughs> Visual Studio 2008, we got uh, the .NET 3.5 framework. Yes. We got Link and Link to SQL. <coughs> we got... WPF and HTML designers. We've got MVC1 and JavaScript IntelliSense. And in the testing space, we've got web and load testing. And the third party tool, LinkPad. LinkPad is a. Done a, by an Aussie. Oh, is it? Yes. yes. Great little tool. I yeah, love that tool. Perth is still kind of part of Australia. Yeah. <laughs> part of Australia. It's the Texas of Australia. Oh, I yeah, didn't know that. You didn't know, yeah. I'll yeah. keep that in mind if I ever get invited there. <laughs> they carry guns? <laughs> no, but they are a bit strange. We call okay. them sand groupers. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, Link to SQL was a great little technology. I liked that when it came out in Visual Studio. It wasn't uh, the big enterprise-y object relational mapping framework, but it was simple for, for simple applications when you mm -hmm. needed to crank something out. And certainly, Link in general, it's another thing I can't imagine C Sharp being as popular as it is today without Link and functional programming capabilities. No. So, 
it was a, that was a great release, 2008. And of course, the SP on NBC was still going strong. Did you know NBC One? It was going to be so important. I wasn't sure at the time. I, I thought the the it, it would be interesting to see if it could get any traction in the uh, Microsoft space, just mm. because. Um, a lot of developers really, were really fully invested into web forms and seemed to enjoy that sort of model. And yeah, even today I talk to people who still enjoy web forms and the abstractions that it provides and not doing any JavaScript. Mm. <laughs> so Visual Studio 2010, we got .NET 4, we got F Sharp, Parallel Extensions, Quick Search, IntelliTrace, MVC 2 and 3. Mm. And in the testing space, we got uh, test manager and code UI test and we finally got that ability to have devs and testers working together. Yes, I actually, I think that was the first time I started using some of those testing tools in Visual Studio. I had a project that, where, that I was on where we wanted to automate some uh, load tests and I think that was part of that release if I remember being able to automate a test runner that would hammer a website with distributed computers. That was kind of fun. <laughs> but um, F Sharp has certainly been a great contribution to .NET, I think. It hasn't it's, become mainstream. It's not mainstream, but uh, the people that use it are very passionate and love it, and I think they, they're they very productive with it, and I think for certain domains, it works very well. And I think some of those richness of the, the team building it flows through into you know, normal C Sharp. Yeah, it, it, it's a great ecosystem, mm. I think, and... Uh, all those people contribute really interesting solutions and, and open source a lot of stuff, so that, that's really cool. So the next release was 2012. It was all black and white. The Metro, <laughs> the metro UI, a lot of the new uh, Team Explorer without the dialogue <coughs> popping up everywhere. Yes, yes. We had um, nice searching and quick launch. We had faster add references. Uh, well, it might be a bug fix. Mm. Uh, we had NuGet. <laughs> Pretty, couldn't work without NuGet. Right. Uh, we got storyboarding with PowerPoint, we got IntelliTrace in production, MVC 3 and 4, Web API, Page Inspector, CSS and HTML, debugging in Chrome, mm. and in the testing space, the exploratory testing and the feedback tool. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I, I guess everyone remembers 2012 for having the uppercase menus, right? <laughs> the upper all caps menus, so thankfully that has gone away. <laughs> Do you but, have but other memories of 2012 as a big release? Um, no, I, I mean, I do, I do remember things that sort of came along with 2012, but and to me, I guess a lot of it, a lot of the excitement around 2012 had to do with Metro apps and things like that, and um, to me, I was just most, but in 2012, mostly doing web programming, yes. so I was excited by the MVC3 and MVC4 releases that came out with that, and uh, Web API. Yes. which I always felt should have been combined with ASP.NBC and, and mm -hmm. um, that's something that they're getting right now. Yeah, so. <laughs> yep, yep. so it So was, it was a huge release, but it felt incremental, didn't it? It did feel incremental. Um, you started to get, a, get the sense that Microsoft was speeding up the release process a little bit, uh, which is good, yeah. um, because then they started with the updates short, yes, shortly after that. Right? Uh, and that meant we didn't have to wait two years for, for updated tools in, in certain areas. The mere fact we got NuGet was so important because right. we started getting a lot of updates that way. Right, yeah. NuGet became such mm. a, uh, a tool that initially, again, it was one of those tools that I underestimated. Yes. I thought, well, there'll be a certain certain number of types of businesses and developers that will use this tool, and now you look at the space that NuGet occupies, and you know, pieces of Windows are, are going to be deployed with NuGet, which is interesting. Yeah. So. Well. And in 2013, we got oh. TFS in the cloud, visualstudio.com. Yes. We got uh, the free version, Visual Studio Community. We got Git support, TypeScript uh, in beta. Yes. Uh, we got MVC5 and web APIs. We got browser link, Twitter bootstrap, OAuth, 64 bit edit and continue, uh, peak code lens, code map, and syncing preferences. Yes. Uh, I was very excited about the Git support. Right. Um, TFS, some people love it, some people hate it. It has great features, it has some weaknesses, but certainly adding Git support, that appeals to a, a larger section of developers than, than TFS, because now um, there's so many projects on GitHub these days mm -hmm. that having the ability to uh, support a Git repository in Visual Studio, that was 
That was huge. Yeah, it was really big. And it, it was sort of also, um, to me, it was Microsoft starting to acknowledge that, hey, there's this other world out there of things that people use and people do. And it was good to see Microsoft actually embrace Git instead of trying to turn TFS into a distributed you know, source control system or something like that. And I think even more importantly, internally, Microsoft needs to share code mm -hmm. a lot. And yeah. Yeah. using Git internally allows that sharing of code a lot better. Yeah, it certainly makes a lot of sense for someone like Microsoft that has a large number of teams and, and they are distributed, you know. We tend to think of everyone at Microsoft as working in Redmond, but in fact they have teams in every country probably. Pretty much. Much. So, yeah. mm. All right, and 2015. What are we, <laughs> 2015, we've got, uh, gee, we've got Roslyn. We've got Ross on yeah. plumbing. Yeah. We've got uh, a whole new NuGet system. That's yes, right. Uh, which works a lot with um, bringing in you know, mobile apps and uh, well, what else have we got? Well, to me, 2015, again, it, it's like the next step where Microsoft's saying, hey, there's all these great things out there. Let's just start to add them into Visual Studio instead of replacing them. So if you look, so uh, yeah, when you install Visual Studio 2015, when you look at the install list, the things going by include Node.js and Bower. Um, and it integrates with NPM, and you see Apache Cordova tools going by, and an Android SDK being installed, and yes. you're like, wow, is this, really, is this really Visual Studio, or did I click on Eclipse installer, or something like that, but no, it, it, it's Visual Studio, and it's um, pretty exciting to have the Roslyn technology in there, so now the, the C Sharp and Visual Basic compilers are, they exist as a service that other components can use to drive It's kind of plumbing, tools. but it's I wonder plumbing. if that will make people happy. I, I think ultimately it will. I think ultimately it will because um, you know, Microsoft has said they wanted to basically refactor the compilers so that they could not only make changes uh, quicker uh, and add new features into the language, but also make the tooling better, so making Visual Studio better. Uh, better IntelliSense, better refactorings, better diagnostics, all of that stuff is enabled by Roslyn. So the, um, the future, now that they finally have Roslyn in place, it's very exciting. And we also got code as well, Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code's interesting. So as soon as that was announced, I installed it in OS X and thought, hey, this looks kind of like Atom. So it is sort of based on some of the same components, but it, it's nice to see. Yeah. yeah, awesome. And so if you were Microsoft, is there any things that you were, you were wishing for? Hmm, in Visual Studio? Hmm, make your life easier. Oh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to get to get, get get to grips with what it's doing today. To me, v Visual Studio is a wonderful tool. I, I do wish sometimes it was just a little bit quicker. So if they ask me to add new features to Visual Studio, you take things out. I would say make it just make it faster. Awesome. <laughs> do what you do now, but faster. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you, hey, Scott. Thanks, Adam. That's been awesome. Always this a pleasure. Is, this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV. Did you get all that? We'll take the SSW TV quiz and test your knowledge now.